Question. When American politicians are saying there are no differences between males and females, I wonder where that country is heading. You can no longer speak of genders anymore. They're saying, why should there be only two options, male or female, when you can choose from a variety of options? Let's be clear, male and female sexes exist. Our bodies are created as either male or female with two different chromosomes. There are occasional variations, but nonetheless, the two bases are male and female. The universe gave us these bodies, so everything must start from this basis. Our male and female bodies are the material expressions of the universe's masculine energy and feminine energy. These expressions are divine. All discussions related to gender must be from the presupposition that the male body and female body exists. I am against any arguments that seemingly deny such a premise. I understand that since humans have a huge psychological aspect, we get confused about our gender identity due to psychological reasons. Also, I respect the argument that we should be allowed to select from a variety of gender options. However, my view is merely that we must take for granted that our physical bodies are already divided into male and female through our chromosomes. These are our circumstances. Therefore, we must accept our body's chromosomes, and from this presupposition, continuously find the line where all sides can come to an agreement. Gender issues must be resolved in this manner. Thus, I see these ongoing gender-related experiments in America as merely learning experiences our country can draw from, rather than a path we should necessarily follow. You only get that level of result when you just declare a blanket anti-discrimination act. It is simply wrong to start from the presupposition that there's seemingly no difference between the male and female bodies, and that we can freely choose whatever sex we want. The male and female bodies are divine. They are the expressions of the principles of divine energy. It's not something we made. Rather, the universe created our bodies like this. So we must respect our chromosomes and find a solution from there. Additionally, there's controversy in America about transgenders not being allowed to use the women's washroom. If you begin to create laws and develop cultures based on only partial self-evidence, you'll forever be pestered by attacks from other partially self-evident aspects and ultimately fall into a never-ending struggle. I see America as continuing to fall deeper and deeper into this struggle and division as more time passes. During times like this, Asia must unite. Asia must become one together. Korea must take initiative with a wider vision, deeper philosophy and richer culture, and guide the others so as to not fall for the schemes of hypocrites. This male-female gender issue in America is being further incited by their politicians, but moreover, there are doctors who are profiting with money by recommending the sex reassignment surgeries. This is what happens when money meets hypocrisy. This is the reality in America right now. Don't fall for it. Firstly, starting from the presupposition that these unique characteristics of our male and female bodies were given to us by the universe, then moving forward by managing the situation with virtue, is actually the highest level of philosophy. This isn't some half-assed, stuck-up philosophy. If you assume the wrong philosophical premise even just once, it will be like a house of cards built on a flimsy foundation of partial self-evidence, endlessly shaky and ultimately doomed to collapse. Why? Because another partially self-evident aspect will inevitably arise and continuously cause problems. If there's no philosophy that can serve as the foundation for guiding humanity with a broader, higher, more comprehensive perspective, then humanity will continue to suffer. So K-philosophy must serve this duty. And these 14 points are what I have established as the framework of K-philosophy. With these 14 points, anyone will be able to find the solution to how to empathize and embrace each other to coexist with prosperity. The solution are these 14 points. In my teacher's journals, he called it the measures for great unity. He said his lifelong philosophy was to realize this great unity worldwide. What I mean by great unity is the harmonious coexistence of all humanity. Therefore, the measures for great unity serve as the solution for all of humanity to come together as one and joyfully celebrate together. These are the measures for creating a world where we all become united into a common heart filled with enthusiasm, and those measures have already come out. They are these 14 points.